In this tutorial, we're going to explore how to recreate this 3D scroll animation where a plant grows as you scroll. Along the way, you'll learn how to animate, add camera movement, and use the scroll event to trigger those animations through interaction, and how to export and add it to your website without any coding. First, let's use this cube to quickly go over how the scroll event works. Let's create a simple animation, making it move from top to bottom and rotate slightly as the user scrolls. So you can just select it, move it up a bit. And you can also make an adjustment to the rotation like this. Now let's click here to create a new state. The position we just set will stay in the base state as our starting point. Now just click on state, select the cube, and this time let's move it down and give it a bit more rotation. You can keep adjusting the position and rotation and switch between the states to preview the result until you get to your final version. After you've set the positions in your states, you can simply click here to add a new event. And now we just click here and then select the scroll option right here. Let's quickly go over the scroll event settings before continuing. When using this event, you can choose between two types, steps and scroll. Steps are based on how much you physically scroll, like using your mouse wheel or trackpad. Scroll, on the other hand, lets you transition between states based on your web page's scroll position. If you select interview under start from, the animation will begin when the component enters the visible area of the screen, and you can choose whether it starts from the top, middle, or bottom. And you can still add an offset here to make it start a bit later. Now, if you select the page option under start from, the animation will start based on the scroll position of the entire page. You can use start at to set the scroll position in pixels where the animation begins and end after to define how many pixels the animation takes to complete. And in this case, for example, the animation will finish after 400 pixels of scrolling. After going over this, let's go back to our basic example, keeping the step settings as they are by default. We'll create a new transition here with the cube as the target. And here you can define which states the transition will go through. Let's keep it from base state to state. You can also set duration and properties for each transition, but for now, let's just keep it simple. Before we check the preview, let's click on export to take a look at the play settings. Here we're going to disable the pan and zoom settings so they don't interfere with the scroll animation. And now we're good to go. If we open the preview, we'll see that when we scroll, the transition we set up for the cube gets triggered. Now let's move forward and show you how to recreate the scroll interaction of a 3D plant growing and embed the final result into your website. If you check the video description, we've added the link so you can remix and copy these scenes to use along with the tutorial. First, we're just going to animate the scale change of the leaves, starting with a single one. Let's select the leaf and press Shift-Command-K to turn it into a component. Now let's adjust the pivot position. Just hold Option or Alt on Windows and click the group layer, then use the gizmo to move the pivot axis to make sure that when the leaf scales, the animation starts from the base, like it's growing from the root. You can move the camera to the top view to keep adjusting the pivot position, just like we're doing here. Now with the component selected, we can create a state. The base state will be our starting point where the leaf is small and in the new state, we'll set the final position, adjusting the scale to make it look like the leaf has grown. You can hold shift, then click and drag to scale it uniformly. If you need to, you can always tweak the pivot again. Just hold option or alt on windows, click the group and use the gizmo to adjust the pivot. And with that, we've defined both positions for the leaf one when it's small, close to the ground, and the other when it's fully grown. The reason we made this a component is so we can easily duplicate it later. It helps keep things organized and consistent and makes it easier to reuse across the scene. Now we'll duplicate the main component using Command D to create a new instance for the next leaf. Let's adjust the rotation. You can adjust the values here or rotate using the gizmo like we did before. Now let's click here to add the state, and then we just scale it to however tall we want this second leaf to be. 
so we'll keep doing this, duplicating and making more leaf instances to create different variations. Just adjust the position, the scale, and rotation of each instance, keeping the initial position with the leaf down at the root and the final one scaled up and in place as if it's grown. And now we've got all four leaves in our design setup with their starting and final positions. And here's a tip. Rename your instances so they're easier to recognize when setting up transitions and interactive events. Now let's select all the elements of the plant, the leaves, and the pot and group them using Command-G. This is the group where we'll add our scroll event. Now let's double click and rename it to plant and that way it'll be easier to identify later. And now let's head over here and click the plus icon to add an event. Let's select the scroll event right here. Here under type, let's select scroll. And for start from, let's choose page. And let's just keep the start at value set to zero. So the animation will begin right when you start scrolling and with end after set to 400. This means that the animation will complete after 400 pixels of scrolling on your web page. Now let's add a new transition action. We'll set leaf one as the target. And just like we did before, we just need to adjust our transition here. Let's keep it on current here and click to select state where the final position is set. And now if you go into play mode and scroll, this leaf animation will trigger where its scale changes. From here, we can simply go back to the scroll event, copy and paste this transition action and just change the target to the other leaves. So first, just copy, then paste it. And finally, change the target. If you go to the preview, you'll see that the animation for the second leaf is also triggered by the scroll event. Starting from the second leaf, we'll tweak the transition a bit, going from current to base state and then to state. We'll also adjust the timing here between current and base state for each instance. This helps each leaf grow and disappear at a different moment, giving us a nice staggered effect. And basically, we just keep repeating this for all the leaf instances, copying and pasting the transition, then simply changing the target and tweaking the timing a little. And now we just need to add a transition for our last leaf. We change the target to the fourth leaf, adjust the time here. And with that, we're all set. Now we've set up the transition for all the leaves. So when we go into play mode and scroll, each one shows up, grows, and then hides with a nice and subtle staggered timing. Now let's add a second animation so that as we scroll, not only do the leaves appear, but the whole plant also rotates. This will make our animation feel even more alive and expressive. We'll start by selecting the plant group we created earlier. For this step and for the rotation effect to go well, it's important to make sure the pivot for this group is centered. Then we'll create a new state. And all we need to do is adjust the rotation axis in each state. First, click on the base state and set the Y axis rotation to negative 180. Now go to the state and here just remove the minus sign so it's 180. And adjusting the rotation this way creates a smooth 360 degree spin around the Y axis. Now let's go back to our scroll event and add a new transition action. This time, we'll keep the target set to the plant group and set the transition to go from current to state. And just like that, if we preview it, we can see that as we scroll, not only do the leaves grow, but the plant design also rotates, making it look much more dynamic. So now we've got the leaf animation and the rotation, which already looks great, but we can also add a camera movement to make it even better. Let's head over to Viewport and click on Add New Camera. Next, we'll create a new state. Just make sure the camera is selected in the viewport and then feel free to move around the scene, adjusting its position in each state as you go. You can pull the camera back a bit in the base state and in the state will bring it closer and slightly change the angle. Just move around the scene with orbit, pan, and zoom. 
You can switch back and forth by clicking on the base state and state to compare the different camera views or positions in each one. Let's lower the camera position just a bit here. And once you're happy with how the camera looks in each state, go back to the group where we set up the scroll events and add a new transition action. This time, set the target to the camera. You can keep the transition set from current to state, and that's it. Now we've got all our transitions under the scroll event. And everything kicks in. The leaves grow, the plant rotates, and the camera moves too. Now it's time to export and embed this into a website. Click on export, then select the viewer option and copy the embed link. This time we'll be using Framer as our web builder to embed the scene. Let's start by adding it to a blank project. Just go to insert and search for embed. Now click on the embed option here and just drag it onto your page. You can adjust the size and position of this, but we'll fine tune that part a bit later. And now you can just go ahead and set the embed type to HTML and then paste the embed link we copied before. And just like that, you've brought your interactive 3D scene into Framer. By clicking here to preview, you'll be able to see your animation in action as you scroll. But we can make a few small tweaks in Framer to keep the element fixed on the screen while scrolling. To match the design from the demo, we can adjust the layout of our page a bit. You can click here to change the layout type, tweak the direction and distribution. For example, you can set it to be centered right here and set the alignment. You can choose between start, center, or end. You can also select your embed, resize it, and move it around the page. To get something similar to the demo, you can position your embed at the top of your page like this. Then with the embed selected, go to the position settings and change the type to fixed. When you set an embed element to fixed in Framer, it stays in the same spot on screen even as you scroll, which works really well for this kind of design. Then all that's left is to add the rest of your page's elements and that's it. We'll keep making tutorials on how to create more animations using this and other features. Let us know in the comments what else you'd like to learn and we'll see you in a future tutorial.